These are all exercises that are targeted to help with osteoarthritis of the hip. We are going to start with standing with three different exercises and then we'll move down to the floor for two to three different exercises as well. The goal of these exercises are to build the strengthening, build and strengthen the lower body and the support muscles for the hips. With the cartilage missing and the hip joint, what happens is we end up putting a lot of pressure on bone to bone, which causes pain, causes inflammation, and it also lessens the range of motion that you can move through, which makes everyday things like reaching down and tying your shoe become more difficult. So by doing more strengthening exercises of the muscles that support the hip itself, we're hopefully going to build the shock absorption in the muscles so that the muscles can take more of the force as we go through daily life rather than bone on bone and grinding. Alrighty, so our standing exercises, we are going to start with a chair squat. A chair squat is going to be one of your most beneficial because you are going to be targeting every muscle that supports our standing and our weight. So everything from the calves and the feet all the way up through every muscle in the uh, hip joint itself and the glutes plus a little bit of low back. So with a chair behind me, I'm going to use this bench for a chair, but you can definitely use a full chair. You want it to line up with somewhere around your knee height. Slightly lower is okay as you build up to it, but make sure that you're not sitting so low that you're really struggling to get back up when you get started here. So feet about hip width, standing up nice and tall. I'm going to sit back into my heels, chest will come forward just a little bit. I'm going to lower to that chair, give it a little bit of rock back once I get there, and then I'm going to use a little rock forward to help me get back to the top. So things that you're watching for, we don't want the chest to come too far forward because then we're going to use the musculature in the front of the legs and we're not going to be activating the back, which is what's so important here. So chest stays pretty tall. As you sit, you're going for nice and quiet. The more quiet you can sit, the more you're using your muscles, targeted muscles, to control the way down rather than just falling down to your chair. As you come up, same thing's going to apply with your chest. It's going to come forward a little bit until you feel like your weight has come forward over your feet. And then you want to press through those heels, chest tall, to stand all the way back up. Your glutes are the biggest muscle group that you have that are working on this exercise. Well, they're big, your biggest muscle group anyway, but they are the most targeted on this exercise. So really feel the squeeze through those glutes as you stand. I'm going to turn forward to show you one other thing that's really important. As women, we are more weak through the outsides of our hips. So those are the musculature, our glute medius, that pulls the legs away. And what happens as we squat is naturally our knees like to roll in. That's what they naturally would want to do if you're not paying attention to where they go. When that happens, we get more stress and strain on the insides of the knee joint. So really important anytime that you squat is that your knees track to your middle to pinky toe. So as you squat, you're going to think about those knees coming out a little bit wider. And as you stand, same thing. Keep them out wide all the way to the top. If you try both ways, you will feel a big difference on the muscles that are working. When you roll in, you're going to feel more of the inside of the knee and the quads. As you push out, you're going to feel more through the actual hip joint. So really important to pay attention to that. Next exercise standing is going to be our reverse leg kicks. So again, we are targeting the glutes and the backside of the body. So hanging on to the back of your chair. So pretend I've turned my chair. Hang on to the back of your chair for support. One leg is gonna come out behind. Standing nice and tall, a little bit of a bend in that bottom knee so we're never locked out. We're gonna use that glute to lift back as far as you can without letting the chest fall forward. It's okay for range, especially when you're starting, to have your chest pitched forward just a little bit. But from there, you want the lift to come from that glute. And then we would switch legs, lift and lower, 
lift and lower. From the front view, what you want to pay attention to is trying to keep equal weight on both hands and your chest or sternum centered between your hands. So if I'm leaning to one side a lot, I probably have a lot of weight in one hand and my center has now traveled sideways. So now what's going to happen is I'm going to end up lifting out to the side. So whether you can get a big lift, a big range, or a very short one, you want to make sure it comes only from lifting through that glute. This will get better in time. If your range of motion is already pretty limited, either by tightness of the hip flexor or because of the stage of where the osteoarthritis is right now, you may not have much range. You may be lifting right here. That's okay. Hopefully, with the stretching included, that's going to improve. But make sure that you are targeting that glute is what is lifting and pulling. All right. One other thing while we're standing is going to finish with a balance. Anytime that we can work on balance and supporting ourselves with our muscle and not with just squatting bone to bone is going to be important. So with balance, you can keep yourself right behind that chair if you want. You can keep hands on the chair if balance is not one of your strengths right now. We're going to bit slightly bend the leg that we're standing on. What happens if we don't bend it is it naturally wants to lock out. Anytime you lock out a joint, you're bone on bone. So if I started like this, locked out, I'm bone on bone on my knee, I've kicked my hip out to the side and I'm now bone on bone on my hip. So this position is a position we want to avoid. So we're going to take a little bit of a bend in the knee, abs in nice and tight, trying not to let the hip kick out sideways. We've got the hip pulled in. The opposite leg is going to lift, and we're just working on balance right here. If you could do this in front of a mirror and look and see what your hips are doing, it will be beneficial. What you're looking for is to make sure that you're not leaned one way and that your hip isn't cocked or kicked out to the side. So now I've got a lot more strain on that hip and I'm sitting bone on bone on the inside of it. So pull up nice and tall, nice straight line across the hips. And you're going to take a hold on one side and then we'll switch. Slightly bend that knee, hips in line, chest tall and hold on the other side. Alrighty, now we're going to take it down to the ground and we're going to talk about clams. Let me switch up my equipment here. So our clams are one of the most targeted hip movements that we can do to strengthen out to the side, which is that abduction, that glute medius. So you're going to lay down on one side. Your knees are going to tuck in. We don't want them all the way into your chest. So they're slightly, they're probably halfway tucked. Feet back behind you so that your body is lined up with your feet. Upper body is just resting. You can lay your head down. You can leave your arm out straight, whatever feels comfortable for you. From here on a clam, we are opening our clam shell basically. So my top knee is gonna lift and lower, lift and lower. The most important part of this exercise is that nowhere in your body moves except this top leg. So if you're really focusing on not moving anything else, all you're gonna feel, especially as you get to the top of wherever your range is, is a squeeze or a burn in that hip and slow lower. What tends to happen, especially if your range of motion is already pretty limited, is that people lean back or roll back in order to get that leg up. So now, what I'm using is gravity of my body rolling backwards and momentum to bring that leg up. Eventually, you may still feel the musculature, but we're not using what we want to use. So you can almost even think of leaning forward a little bit and forcing yourself to stay kind of rolled forward and getting whatever range you can. All right, and then we'll switch sides. So opposite side, same position. 
top leg lift and lower. You may find pretty quickly that you have a lot more range in one side than the other. I'm pretty even and not exactly great in my range here. I'm pretty tight, so that's definitely something that I need to work more on. Mm -hmm. Lift and lower. All right, so those are our plans. And then from there, we're going to flip over to your back from line hamstring bridges. So now we just targeted the outside. We're going to target back behind again. So feet are flat, pulled in towards your, heel, your hips, but not all the way to your butt. You want to make sure that the feet are about hip width and that your knees, again, are going to line up with your feet. We don't want them rolling in like we talked about earlier. We don't want them rolling out. So knees in line with those hips. Arms are resting down by your side. The hip bridge comes from the glutes. If you don't think about initiating from the glutes, most likely your hamstrings will try to cramp on you. And they may cramp anyway, but the most important thing to think about is to tuck the glutes or the pelvis under first. So we're going to start by tucking the pelvis under. So now I pulled the abs in tight and I'm trying to press that low back into the ground. And then I'm going to squeeze those glutes and lift the hips as high as I can, like I'm trying to get my hip bones to the ceiling. When you get to the top of this position, you should feel the glute squeeze that you are working with. You will probably also feel the hamstrings working. And slow release. And you can release it all the way. And then we tuck the pelvis under, squeeze the glutes, press down and lift, hold that squeeze, and slow lower. So on this one, you may definitely want to watch for making sure that you're pressing through your heels and not your toes. A lot of times we'll kind of rock through those toes and lift the heels. You'll end up with more calf and hamstring and not as much glute. Remember that glute's what we're working with. So tuck the pelvis, abs in tight, squeeze the glutes, pinch, pinch that penny, they would say. Press down through the heels, lift the glutes up nice and high, pause, slow return to the ground. Alrighty. From there, two more. Uh, one is just a really important overall core movement, which is a plank. Anytime that you can include planks in a workout is a good thing. Most people don't enjoy doing them, but they're very beneficial for your entire core. So in a plank, hands are gonna start, hands and elbows are underneath the shoulder. So you wanna make sure that you feel like your pressure is all the way through your hands and not just in the back or your, not just in the palm of your hand, but all the way through those fingers. Feet are gonna go back behind. We're gonna pull those knees up and we're looking for a straight line from the shoulders through the hips all the way to the heels. Looking to avoid the pike. Now my shoulders are not over my hands and my hips are in the air. We have totally lost the core involvement here. I'm going to shift it forward. I'm going to take the arms and rotate them in like you're trying to trap your rib cage in place or turn off your armpits, some, be some people say. So rotate those arms in, squeezing the abs, squeezing the glutes. So this is the position you're looking to hold. Your goal would be to work your way up to holding for a minute. So when you start, if you can get 10 to 15 seconds, great. Take 10 to 15 seconds. Come down and take a rest. And then go back up, see if you can get 10 to 15 more seconds until you hit that minute. So over time, you are hoping to take less and less breaks in order to get to that minute. And then a side plank. So this one is gonna be a little bit of a down the road exercise, especially if you have not been doing planks and you haven't been doing much hip work. The side plank is sort of like the opposite of a clam. So instead of lifting my leg up, using the bottom leg to lift my whole body. So we're gonna keep these kneeling to start. My knees are pretty much in line with my hips and my shoulders. Feet are back behind now, and when I flip over, I'll show you. Feet are back behind, they're just kinda of hanging out on the ground. I'm gonna press down into the ground with my upper body while squeezing the outside of my body. So my glute medius, and all the muscles running on this side, my obliques, they're all pressing down. Abs in nice and tight, glutes are squeezed, and this will be our side plank. This is one that you wanna wait probably four-ish weeks or so, 
I'm going to show you from this side. So feet are back behind, pressing up, nice straight line, and holding right now, or holding right there. That one's going to be something that you want to work on as you move forward. Don't start with that one. Make sure that you can go through the clams and the bridges and the uh, standing chair squats without having joint pain and uh, without having extreme soreness. And then you can add those side planks in as you go. So remember in the text that I sent you, it has all of the numbers for how many rounds, how many repetitions of each exercise and why. So make sure to read through that. And if you have any questions on any of these exercises, definitely let me know. Um, in a few weeks, or probably in about four weeks or so, when you're looking to add some resistance, uh, let me know and I will send you a quick video that shows you how you can add band and um, dumbbell resistance to all of these to keep working them as you get stronger. All right, good luck. Let me know if you have any questions or if I can help you out on any of these exercises.